This is your daily dose of all things royal. Welcome back, my gorgeous, good-looking friends. This is part two of The Biggest Fraud Alive. If you haven't checked out part one, I highly recommend you check it out, perhaps maybe after this video. Definitely worth a watch. Picking back up where we left off in part one, we looked at Meghan's early years, identifying mass manipulation of Meghan's childhood past. The evidence presented was all taken from what was told to the public and printed in the public domain. As we look back and reflect upon the last six years, from the very beginning, the public was lied to. We really don't know who the psychopath next door is. Truly, who is Rachel Markle? Before we continue on into Megan's high school and college years, we need to take a step back and start from the very beginning, looking at how this demonic presence entered the world. So according to the documentary, My Story, that was aired on Channel 5 in the UK, Thomas Markle had stated that Megan was born via C-section, and he was the first one to hold her. She was born as a C-section, so I got to hold her first. I think it's important for you to hear this for yourself, so you can understand my logic. Uh, oh, there we are. This is a newborn, definitely a newborn first day. Megan. Yes, born. yes. So you just heard Thomas Markle say, definitely a newborn first day. So you can see here, it's Doria with Megan. Then they go on to show this photo with Doria, and it corroborates with the article that was put out by the Daily Mail. This article was dated back in April of 2019. As you can see here, it says only hours old in the arms of her mother. So here we are again with another lie being told. It's impossible for Doria to be sitting up in a chair after just having a C-section. Putting aside the photo looking completely fake with Doria's deer in the headlights look, almost with the expression of what do I do with this thing, hours after C-section, you're still coming out of anesthesia as well as still hooked up to heart monitors and fluids. Remember, you just had your insides ripped out and put back in. So there's no way that she would have been able to sit in a chair and hold a baby. It's just not possible. So then, now when you go back to what Thomas Markle said, saying that this is the first day, you look at the two photos and you realize that something's not right. Doria's not wearing the same dress. Again, she just had a C-section. How is she sitting up? And the babies don't look the same. I don't know, folks. That doesn't look like the same baby. But given the fact that Doria is wearing a different dress in the other photo, and literally this is supposed to be hours after C-section... Nah, I'm not buying it or believing it. Could Thomas Markle have been a part of manipulating photos too? Well, let's find out. I just couldn't put her down. Continuing on with the documentary, pops up this photo. We all know that the photos and videos that were featured in this documentary were supplied by Thomas Markle. So when you look at this photo long enough, it starts to become bizarre. Initially, you automatically assume that Thomas Markle is in the bathroom, and because he's by himself, he has the camera set up so that it takes the picture while he's looking into the mirror. You see a shower behind him, you see towels. But what is really odd about this photo is he's got these hanging monkeys, and then plants in front of him. I don't know about you folks, but in my bathroom, if I had a countertop, I wouldn't have a big ass plant sitting on there. That's just my preference. But continuing on to see why this becomes strange, in the very beginning of this documentary, pops up this photo. Doria and me and me. When you look closer at this photo, it appears that if we are to assume that Thomas Markle was in the bathroom the first time around, this looks very much like it's the same space, but manipulated. As you can see, Thomas Markle had cut around it so you don't see the bathroom stall behind there. You also have more of a plant that's sitting in front, whether it be to cover up any type of photoshopping. And then you have these monkeys. This time around, there's only three of these monkeys dangling from the ceiling, which is another thing that I find so bizarre is why in the bathroom do you have these things dangling? What are you doing above the sink with those things? 
Also, the other thing that's odd to me is the angle at which this photo was taken. So it does appear that they're back in this bathroom. And if the mirror was being used to take this photo, then you would think they'd be looking at the camera. It's off to the side as well as not straight on, almost as if it looks like somebody took this photo for them. After reviewing these photos, I'm coming to the conclusion that these two were manipulated. And the last point that I'd like to make about these photos is when you look at the camera that's in the bottom picture, that would fall in line with the camera from 1979 to 1981. But what's interesting is in this photo with Megan, who looks around two or three years old, is holding her dad's camera, which is from the 70s. So Mike, does anyone know if Thomas Markle is a camera collector or is this photo photoshopped? Dory worked at ABC. We met and I found her very attractive and asked her out. Eventually, we came, we, we came together. We do decide to get married. Some people are a little shocked. At that time, I think Dave was about 12. Okay, so now this is really important to understand. So Thomas Markle is saying that Babe was 12 at the time. And in Tom Bauer's book, he writes... Thomas and Doria had met in 1977 at the ABC Film Studios in Los Angeles. 33 years old, Thomas had just been nominated for an Emmy as the lighting director of the daytime TV soap General Hospital. Unsurprisingly, he spotted Doria, a slim, beautiful black 21-year-old trainee makeup artist with a nose stud. After a few weeks, Doria moved into Thomas's untidy family home. Now, this would be correct about Samantha's age, because if you do the math, 1977 minus 1964 gives you 12. And when you cross-reference over to Samantha's book, The Diary of Princess Pushy's Sister, she does confirm that she met Doria when she was only 21 years old. So if we're going to go off of this, being that this is 1977, fast forward a few more lines down in the book Revenge to where Tom Bauer seems to spill the beans without really telling people that he spilled the beans. I think Tom Bauer here wants us to read between the lines where he writes, Their decision to marry on the 23rd of December 1979 was unusual. At the time, fewer than one white American man in a thousand was married to a black woman. When I married Doria, recalled Thomas, people asked, what color will your baby be? I said, I don't know, and I don't care. On reflection, Thomas became aware that in mixed-race marriages, their child's color becomes an issue of self-identity for the parents, and the issue is discussed before the birth. So in deconstructing Tom Bauer's words, their decision to marry was unusual? Well, why would it be unusual? Traditionally, when people get married, it's not unusual if they're in love. I don't find that a white man marrying a black woman back in the late 70s was so controversial. But then it gets into saying that people asked, what color will your baby be? And then it continued on at the very last sentence where it said, and the issue is discussed before the birth, which leads me to believe here that Doria was pregnant and she was not married yet, which now makes a lot of sense when you look at all the manipulated photos and the lies that the public has been told. And finally, this piece that Tom Bauer writes firms up that Megan indeed was around in 1979. As it says here, Doria had begun to sell jewelry. Her new company, Three Cherubs, Irk Samantha. The three represented Doria, Thomas, and Megan, indicating that Megan was present. It says, why isn't it the five cherubs, Samantha asks. Increasingly jealous of Megan, who is now existing, and already frustrated about the difficulties of becoming an actress, Samantha, now 13, told dot, dot, dot. So this would align with Megan being born in August of 79. Samantha, still 13, until November of 1979, to which she would turn 14. So here we have it stated that she is now 13, essentially going on 14, if you look at it this way. And we can assume that there is a possibility that Doria and Thomas were not married yet. So you might be saying, but, but, but what about these photos? Well, this, my friends, too, is also manipulated. I'm sure many of you are saying, what? 
Yeah, it's Photoshop. Like how many of you notice the extra feet that are seen right here compared to the rest of the photo? Where are the bodies behind Doria? Nowhere. Now that you see it, you just can't unsee it now. Did anyone notice how poorly photoshopped this was? Look at Doria's ring finger. As you can see, the knuckle, or what is supposed to be the knuckle, ballooning out as if the ring is cutting off all circulation to it. That's not normal. That is definitely photoshopped. Can anyone honestly say that in this picture is Tom and Doria? I mean, we see their faces, and that could have easily have been photoshopped in. But when you think about the theory of, let's say, Megan was born in 1979 out of wedlock, the chances of seeing Doria in a photo probably is slim to none in December if she has additional weight on herself. So when you look at this photo, look how thin the so-called Doria looks. Ain't no way that could have been pulled off if, let's say, she did have a baby and was losing some of that baby weight. So now it makes complete sense as to why these photos look so wonky and inconsistent. Sure, Doria is wearing a ring here, but that could have easily have been photoshopped in. If you notice the other photo, it's very blurry. Also, pay attention to Doria's head of hair. It looks like it is short and pretty much shaved down. So here is Doria at home with this newborn and now has to tie her hair back when we just saw she didn't have any. And then on top of it, no longer wearing any type of wedding band. Think about this. Why is it that there's no photos of Doria being pregnant? I'm not saying that Doria wasn't pregnant. It could possibly be any of the photos that they have of Doria pregnant might give away the actual year to when Megan was really born, which I believe now is 1979. So now let's come back to where we were when we left off with Megan leaving and graduating, going into high school after middle school. So obviously there's something wrong here. As you can see on the right hand side, you have Meghan Markle with short hair in 1993. And then on the left side, we have Meghan's friends, Nanaki and Carrie, who are standing with Meghan. And apparently this is also supposed to be 1993. What appears to be happening is everything seems to be about two years off in manipulation. If I had to guess, this would be Meghan age 14, 15 in 1995. So now if we're supposed to trust Nanaki and Megan being 15 in 1996, this is what it would look like because this was the European trip. But since everything that we have found out now so far has been off, I'm willing to say that this trip to Europe didn't happen in 1996. It most likely happened in 1995. So now what we're starting to see with Megan is her becoming overly sexualized. Now, if we are all supposed to believe that Megan had gone into high school fall of 1995, then in 1996, apparently Megan went to a Christmas ball with her boyfriend, Louis Segarra. So apparently they went to two Christmas balls, one in 1996 and then one in 1997, seen here. So I'm going to go ahead and question this photo because in the summer of 1997, Louis Cigar had graduated from high school and was going into college. Why would he come back to go to a high school dance with uh, supposedly this sophomore, especially since this sophomore that looks like a stripper or a hooker that easily could have been 16, 17 years old, possibly in the 11th grade? It's very suspicious to me that... Megan and her school friend in 1998 are standing behind the same tree when traditionally this tree changes every year, as seen in 1996. Based off of the other manipulations that we have uncovered, somehow I feel like this too is also another manipulation. So now the big question that I have here is where is Megan's junior year high school photo? Now, this is all speculation, but if we go off of the theory that Megan was born in 1979, it would be impossible for her to graduate in 1999. This is probably the most mind-bending piece to all of this. It does check out that Megan graduated Immaculate Heart High School in 1999. So did Nanaki Pretty, as well as their friend Susan. This class roster that you see here came directly from the Immaculate Heart High School website. So how could this be if the math is not working out? Well, it could be a couple of reasons. It could be one, she simply was born in 1981, but 
And that, to me, is highly unlikely based off of all the evidence that I presented here with the manipulations around the photos as well as the inconsistencies surrounding her age. It shouldn't be that complicated. The one thing that I do not buy is that Nanaki and Megan had known each other since the age of two, and that's because there are no photos or evidence showing that they were indeed going to school all along from the beginning at the age of two. We start to see Megan and Nanaki aligned when there is discrepancy around Megan's age, hovering around 1990 and 1991. Now, the one thing that I am not completely sure is, did Nanaki graduate with Megan from middle school into high school? When I looked at the video, I didn't see Nanaki anywhere in that group. I could have missed her, but I, I looked. I didn't see her. You tell me, is that Nanaki? It looks something like her, but I can't be too sure. And as I showed you in the other video, this video was manipulated. So getting back to Megan's high school class photos, the question is, where is her junior year for 1997? So when I go in and type in Megan Markle 1997, look at the interesting photos that come up. We just got done talking about Louis Segarra posing with this prostitute. And then below it, where people have speculated that someone in that photo is with child. I can't really comment if that's the case. From looking at this photo, I can't tell if there is a bun in the oven. But if you put this photo in x-ray, this is what you get. I could see how people could come to that conclusion, which would make some kind of sense on how Megan got to 1999. Perhaps maybe there was a year that she took off just to chill. Then that could possibly explain how in 1998, Megan has these big watermelons. This too is all just speculation. This photo could also be a lie. It probably never even happened based off of all the lies that we have been told already. Then we have another black and white photo presented to us of Megan being on the prom court. I'm not sure if she was prom queen, but... Again, here we are with another possible manipulation to make us think that not only was she so popular, but she became this prom queen. You can't help but wonder, but where was Megan for Nanaki's 18th birthday party? As you can see here, Nanaki was all excited to get this Diane von Furstenberg dress for her 18th birthday party. You would think Megan would have a photo with her, at least so they can show it off and show how close they are, right? Anyhow, as far as I can tell, Megan's high school graduation in 1999 is legit, seen here. So just so everybody understands here, with Immaculate Heart High School, there is no traditional cap and gown. This is it. So yeah, it is confirmed that Megan was admitted into Northwestern University in 1999 for being part of the class of 2003. As you can see here, this is the actual book itself. And what's interesting is looking at Megan's profile for her freshman class. Take a look at what she is majoring in and what her interests are. Rachel Markle, majoring in journalism, not theater, not international relations as she continues to keep lying about, but journalism. And her interests are dancing and people. <laughs> When you look at her against all the other freshmen, you've got pre-med, engineering, business, international studies, computer science. Then you have mediocre Megan, who most likely got into Northwestern, not because of her intelligence or merit, but because of the DEI card. But this is about as far as Megan gets, but the lies continue. There's no evidence that Megan graduated from Northwestern University. In fact, when you look at these photos closer, this is also another manipulation. As you can see here, Thomas posed with his daughter, but you can't tell what year is on that tassel. In addition, look at Doria and Megan posing. Do you see anybody else in the background wearing caps and gowns? No. Then you have this photo with Lindsay Jill Roth, who also went to Northwestern, but why isn't she wearing a cap and gown? And again, why is there nobody wearing cap and gowns? If Megan truly did graduate Northwestern, then she would be wearing the Northwestern cap and gown because there's a standard mandatory one that is purple, not black and flimsy like this one. Do Megan's pictures look anything like a Northwestern graduation? Not even remotely close. 
And then we have Thomas Markle, who has been behind his daughter, stating, I've got receipts, I've got receipts. Sure, you have receipts. I'm sure you have maybe the first and maybe even the second year receipt of paying for her college. But but there's no evidence that she finished. In fact, Samantha Markle's book kind of gives it away. On page 185, Samantha writes, I was sitting at my desk writing when the phone rang. I was pleasantly surprised to hear that Meg was calling me during her internship in Argentina. Dad paid a hefty fee for her to participate in the month-long program that Uncle Mike had given her a letter of recommendation for. She goes on to say, I knew she couldn't take pictures while she was working because that would not be professional, but I was hoping she would squeeze a couple in when she was in the penthouse apartment on her own time. Being there would be relatively easy for her because she was fluent in Spanish as her second language. It was a perfect position for her to be able to interpret between dignitaries as they interacted with the media in Buenos Aires. I also knew that dad wouldn't have to worry about anyone taking advantage of her because she understood what they were saying. Dad made sure that she had plenty of spending money for whatever she wanted so she didn't have to work while she was doing the internship. It was an important opportunity and even though it was only for one month, Uncle Mike had worked for the State Department for 40 years and retired so his recommendation carried a lot of clout. Meg had not completed her degree yet, so this experience would go a long way for her resume, even if she didn't finish school. Now, why would Samantha go ahead and say that, even if she didn't finish school? Unless Megan didn't finish school. This is the thing. People that are going to Northwestern University are not just going to go there and say, ah, after two years, just quit, after spending over 30-something thousand dollars a year. Unless you are a true screw-up, you're going to stay there to get that paper. Of course, if Megan had that paper, we would have seen it. We would have seen it hanging up on the wall in that Montecito Olive Garden castle. It's a status thing, and we all know how superficial and shallow Megan is. She would have that hanging up on the wall for everyone to see in plain sight. We know this. Honestly, with all the lies that we have been told and seeing all the manipulation, who's to say that this story is even true? In Tom Bauer's book, Revenge, when he talks about Argentina, it states, The following year, she returned to Buenos Aires to meet a boyfriend. Thomas Markle paid for that trip, too. When Megan called from Argentina, saying, I need $500 to get out of the hotel, he sent her the money. First off, why didn't he get her back on a plane to come home? Why is he sending her $500 to get out of the hotel? He should have got her on a plane to come back home. I don't believe whatever story this is because it makes absolutely no sense. It sure sounds like Thomas was bailing Megan out of something, in my humble opinion. So my final thoughts about all of this after going through this exercise and this two-part series is that we really don't know the real Meghan Markle, or even if that is Meghan's name, is her name Rachel Meghan Markle? Also, the other thing is, why would Thomas Markle continue to support these lies and back it? Clearly, there has been evidence that I have shown everyone of manipulation. What does he have that he is protecting in order to continue and keep going with these lies that Meghan keeps telling? From the way that I see this, there's nothing sinister about Thomas. Like, he doesn't have an agenda that he's doing this with Megan. He's not colluding with her or anything like that. He's just caught in the midst of all of Megan's lies. And quite frankly, I believe that Samantha and Tom Jr. also are caught with this because they are there to protect their father. This has nothing to do with any type of selfish agenda or grifting. This all has to do with protecting Thomas Markle because Megan sucked him in to lying for her. And that is the issue. When you look at Samantha's book, I truly believe that the reason why it took so long to get out is because she had to make sure all the numbers worked out with the various dates. And when you look at the book, there are so many errors in discrepancies surrounding dates and timelines, as well as the photos. The photos in there themselves do not paint an accurate picture. 
Like, take, for example, this photo. They have been pushing that Megan is 11 in this photo. So what does Samantha do? She puts the year at 1991. That's impossible because Tyler and Thomas Dooley were literally born in those years. In 1991, Thomas Dooley was born. He wouldn't be the size of a six- or seven-year-old here in this photo. So do you see how the family was trying to accommodate Megan to pull off this lie? If Megan was telling the truth, we wouldn't have so many inconsistencies on something so simple as, like, the birthday. I don't believe for one second that Megan was this sweet and caring kid. I believe that she was an obnoxious little brat. Thomas Markle Sr. went along with all of it up until Megan ghosted him and iced him out. This is why he's so pissed off. It's because of all the lies that she had brought him into for him to support. Clearly, you can see this. Thomas Markle knows more than he is willing to share. And so does the palace, because who do you think helped make it so squeaky clean to cover up a lot of this stuff of Megan's past? And when you think about it, look at when people go into a witness protection program. What do you think happens? They scrub their past to make sure that it's untraceable. So I am guessing a similar service was applied to Megan. So now you can see the real threat that Thomas Markle, Samantha, Tom Jr. were to Megan and why she cut them off is because of the amount of lies that they have not only covered up for her, but know about her. So when you look at this whole situation, there's more to this story that meets the eye. And I do think that Thomas Markle Sr. knows more than he is sharing. And in some cases, all of them have been doing their best to figure out how to deal with this and not cause further trouble. Look, I get that Megan is Thomas Markle's daughter and he's going to do whatever he has to do in order to try and see Megan again. Here's the thing, though. What he is doing by going along with some of this stuff or had been going along with some of this stuff has enabled this woman to cause a lot of trouble in the world, particularly against his own daughter, Samantha. A lot could have been shut down, but the family supported it. Take, for example, with Thomas Markle Jr. He tried to go along with what Megan was trying to make the world or the public think about her. Remember, Thomas Markle Jr. had wrote a letter to Prince Harry telling him not to marry this demon and the reasons why. And everything came to be true, remember? But afterwards, he got so much hate and so much crap, he ended up having to apologize and then as well submit photos painting Meghan in this sweet and compassionate way. Like, take, for example, this photo. Look at the caption below. It says, Taking a stand, age 11, Megan wears a white ribbon to oppose gender-based violence. Campaigning is her passion. She is now an ambassador for children's charity World Vision Canada. Okay, fair enough. We're all thinking, oh, she's wearing this ribbon on her overalls. But when you look at the submission, the photo came from Thomas Markle Jr., which was supplied by John Chappell. So when you go to see who John Chappell is, he's a photographer. So what do you think they did here? They most likely edited in that ribbon because at that time, nobody was talking about gender-based violence. <laughs> like, you really think Megan was thinking about that? Like, I'm guessing if this was all to go along with the narrative and the PR stance, when I was 11 years old, I wrote to this dish soap company to get this commercial changed. You know, this was the facade that Megan wanted painted to be seen as this humanitarian. And part of me wonders, because we've been lied to so much, is, is Mr. Markle Sr. telling us the truth that he doesn't have any contact with Megan? Somehow I feel like he does, but Junior and Samantha don't know this. That's what I honestly feel. On one of the Sussex Squad podcasts back in 2021, they had a guest who was an actual journalist or broadcaster for Inside Edition. This is what she had to say. That is awesome. Good morning, everyone. My name is TC Newman. I am a reporter for Inside Edition, and I am oh so excited to be oh here to chat with you about um First of all, Harry and Megan, of course, but also to talk about um, 
the media and, and perceptions and reality. And it is just time to dig in and, uh, and yeah, to celebrate cool. such cool. good news with the Sussexes this week. So let's get chatting. I see uh, uh, Nels is asking why does Tobo? Oh, geez. All right. Uh, honest question. I don't know. I have seen him. I know it was he was on recently after the um, the uh, announcement of uh, Baby Sussex number two on the way. Um, I think it's an it's an easy target, and I know that sounds terrible, but uh, Thomas Markle has a a, a rep who generally goes to TMZ first because TMZ prints that whatever he says. Um, and depending, again, I, I talked earlier about how wanting to push the story forward. And while everybody was reacting, saying, Harry and Meghan are having a baby. Well, mo- a lot of news outlets were trying to look for that extra edge. Why are, you, why are you going to watch ours rather than someone else's? So I saw another show said... Uh, Harry and Meghan's new baby. Where do they run? Where will he fall? He or she fall in the line of succession? We spoke to a royal expert, uh, and, and sadly, yep, producers on my show grabbed Thomas Markle. I, I I asked them not to, and actually, I work on the digital side, so you'll see if I post videos and stuff onto um, Twitter, it's from Inside Edition's YouTube page. We didn't run his interview. We, I, we had a meeting and I will say I stood up in that meeting. Well, not stood up because we were on Zoom. Um, but I did say we're not going to run Thomas Markle on our YouTube page. There's still so much out there that has been manipulated. I just can't do anymore because this is a lot. It's a lot to take in and perhaps maybe I'll do a part three. But just so you can see how we have been manipulated from the very start. You know, I find this amazing that this could be put to bed and put to rest by just showing a birth certificate. But nowhere can you find Meghan Markle's birth certificate anywhere. So it makes you wonder. Also, how much of a hand does Thomas Markle have? And let's say if this is true, that it's not 1981, which I personally do not believe based off of everything that I've shown you. Did he have a hand in going along with this plan? And you have to ask the question, was Meghan really born on August 4th? Because when you look at the date, who else shares the birthday of August 4th? Not only the Queen Mother, but also Barack Obama. So was that intentional? And all of this has been one big facade. I think Argentina is a big piece to this puzzle. What really happened down in Argentina? And what was Uncle Mike's role here? I truly believe that there is way much more to this story than what we have been told. Clearly, we have been lied to. But what do you guys think? Definitely leave your thoughts below. And as always, I will be back with more content. But until then, please be safe and I'll talk to you later. Bye! It was such a broad.